Judge, today's case is Pandora's box. I have two very young people with a very active sex life and very firm ideas about where they want to be. Let's see if we can get them there. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Ramarcus Steele and Tiandra Lawrence. The two of you have been together for two years. You have no children together. Mr. Steele, you have brought Ms. Lawrence here to uh, recoup a significant amount of money. You say that you incurred $11,500 in credit card debt because of her, but you're only seeking $5,000, and you will tell me about that momentarily. But before we do, Mr. Steele, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship mm -hmm. and why we're here in divorce court today? Okay, well, it was my idea to bring the other women into our relationship and to start having the threesomes and stuff. Well, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How did that conversation come about? Did you pull it out out of the blue? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> did you suggest it to her out of the blue? Was it something she was interested in? How does that happen? Okay, well, I'm gonna run you from the top. All right, so we, we at her friend's crib, and we chilling. We about to eat. We sitting on the couch. Yeah. And I'm sitting next to her, and I noticed that she's on her phone, so I'm, I'm trying to tell her, you know, get off your phone, let's just kick it with your friend, you know, and I look over and I, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a dating app, and normally people are looking for people of the opposite sex on those apps, so I'm like, yo, like, are you telling me that you don't want to be with me? And I look closer, and I see that it's women that she's looking at. And when I ask her about it, she tries to, like, shove the phone back in her pocket, and I'm like, no, 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 talk to me, like, do you, are you interested in dating women? Like, do you find them attractive? You want to sleep with them? Like, would you rather be with them? Are you here with me as a mistake? Like, what's, <laughs> what's, what's going on? Like, just let me know so I know how to move forward. And, you know, she doesn't really have an answer. So I'm telling her that we can explore together. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. Okay. Ms. Lawrence, is that, is that an accurate recitation of what occurred? Yeah, mostly. I've had curiosities all my life, mm -hmm. and I grew up in a family where they was just very shunned and you couldn't talk about things like that. Right. So eventually he brought it out of me, we started talking about it, and he did suggest that we do things together, but he also encouraged me to have relationships with women outside of our relationship. So he was like, yeah, I don't care, they're just women, it doesn't make any difference in my life, so you can go have fun, you know? Did you say that? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> but that was before when I thought that the women were going to remain respectful and that it was going to continue to be something that all three of us did uh -huh. if other women were involved. Or four, depending on how many we decided or four. to. Or four! He's being extra with it. I don't understand. Go have fun by yourself, but then you want me to only stay with you in it. So make up your mind. That's been my I'm still stuck on the four part. <laughs> <laughs> You've had... Foursomes? Yeah, we've had foursomes. You and three women. And three women. He's living his best life, man. <laughs> this brother over there is in full agreement. Look at him. <laughs> he hasn't been that happy all day. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the change of respect level and, and the level of information that you were getting. Well, she would go on solo dates, and I would encourage her to go on these solo dates. Mm. And when she came back, there would be no story about how the date went, about anything. They were usually boring, so what am I going to come back and tell you? I know these women, so I know for a fact that none of these dates were boring. We most went out them, to eat. <laughs> we most of them about I dated. Nothing. Most of them I dated before, even when I <laughs> before I dated her. So most of these women Which I, I never already knew. I found out until after. I mean, on a date, <laughs> you said you wouldn't even tell me. Woman up with women you already knew. A few of them, yeah. Yeah, he would text them behind my back and then set it up so that they could watch me. It uh, wasn't no, even so true. that. No, that's not true. It wasn't even so that I could get to know them. It was just he trusted these girls to spy on me to see if I was actually a lesbian or not. No, that's not true, Judge. <laughs> that's not true. Whatever's true, Mr. Steele, let me tell you, this son that cannot turn out well. Right. Too much. Too much. Intimacy and knowledge and intersectionality never works out. Right. Just, just, just generally. <laughs> so, when did he start first start expressing problems with what you were doing? Um, I guess he suspected that I was sleeping with women outside of him and not telling him. But the majority of the time, I was just hanging out with my friends. So, women have a lot of female friends. Right. But I do have to say that. I did have a threesome and didn't tell you about it. See? But the only reason was because he encouraged me and said that it was okay to have relationships with other women outside. Threesome, three women? Yes. 
Y'all just busy. Woo! <laughs> 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 it's the first I'm hearing of it, Judge. But you said are it was you, okay. Are you, are, are you, are, or do you know? Are you a lesbian? Are you bisexual? Or are you still questioning? I definitely like men, and I don't want to have a relationship with a woman. Like, it was just fun for a little bit, you know, the hot girl summer stuff. And I was right. doing it with my man. <laughs> right, right, so... right. So, so is the hot summer over? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> so what is your current concern, Mr. Mr. Steele? I mean, I, I understand the nature of that concern, but tell me what has gone on since then that you two now are questioning whether or not you should remain together. As far as the women goes, this is the first time that I've ever got an actual answer from her as far as to whether or not she wants to date women, continue dating women, date me, and I'm glad it's me. Right. And I wasn't sure for a while. Possibly the threesome, foursome thing is possibly over with now. Now that yeah. I see how that backfired. It right. didn't go right. how I thought. Right. Hey, it was fun while it lasted, though. But, and, right. it, and it didn't go how I thought because he was just trying to have control over every situation and bring women so he could force an answer out of me. And that's why it's always been confusing because it's been a very negative conversation every single time we've talked about it. Just because I wasn't... You know, you're nice. very, very young, Ms. <laughs> Lawrence, but you're very well-spoken. I enjoy <laughs> listening to you. You can get a little wild side to you, but... You, <laughs> you're a thoughtful young lady, and you're, you're a thoughtful young man as well, Mr. Steele, so are you satisfied at this juncture, given what she just said to you, that indeed you're it? and not women. Yeah, I, I, I like the answer. I'm glad that it was me. I didn't like the fact that I had to find out about the threesome just now. Mm. But after asking for so long... you were bugging and being annoying about it. I, I wouldn't have to bug her if I would've got the answer. So he always just reminds me of everything that he's done for me, throws it all in my face. And... Okay, let me chime in on that. I give, I give you the full story. Okay, so I told her just go to rehab, and get yourself back together. Don't worry about anything. I'll take is that, care of Is that the damage that was done? Yeah, yeah, yeah the damage was. that was done. Tell me about the car accident. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, in April, she got into a really bad car accident, totaled her car, and she was hurt. She couldn't work. And I told her just... Go to rehab and get yourself back together. Don't worry about anything. I'll take is that, care of... Is that the damage that was done? Yeah, yeah, yeah the damage was. that was done. You, you yeah. were rear-ended? Yeah, I was rear-ended, and I spun in, like, six-lane traffic, and um, I messed up my knee, I slammed my knee, and I had muscle tearing in my shoulder and mus uh, bone bruising. Ooh. So. It, was pretty, it was pretty bad. I, I told her I was going to hold everything down until she got her big settlement check and that everything that I had put in that we were going to put back in on the back end with the check mm -hmm. and that the rest was going to be for her to just to keep. And over time, that just, it changed. Like, she, she told me recently that she was not going to give me any money out of the settlement. And that only changed because every single day he's sitting there bashing me about it and talking crap and saying that I won't pay him. I can't even work right now, so what money do I have to even pay him back? And he only covered my bills for about a good three months. Did you get a settlement check as a function of the accident? I just finished all of my uh, paperwork with them, and right. I technically only owe him $2,000. Now, now, why do you place the value on what, it, what you owe him as, at two grand? Because he says it's 11500 mm -hmm. Because let's just talk about how the fact that he put two cars on his car that weren't mine, and I wasn't driving either one of them. He totaled one, and then the other one got stolen. So that was his fault and not mine. So how am I, why did am I supposed to sit there and put two cards care? on that credit card? I, I, I did. How you get, trying to get her to pay you half of that back? Well, the, what I'm asking from her is all, uh, is all accumulated from what happened from the accident. It's separate charges from that. That has nothing to do with it. Do with it. So that's yeah, just that half of rent. That is my one time he paid my phone bill, and then he paid my insurance three times. So that's definitely not adding up to $2,000. For... Tell me about how he's ragging you and bothering you. What's he saying? What's the worst thing he's done? Well, I have just picked up a second job, and I'm also a nanny. But he'll sit there and say that I'm an awful person and that I'm bad financially. He won't... He won't... Let me get the moment to actually pay him back. Right. I'm getting up every day. I'm working hard. I keep telling him I'm going to pay him back. We literally had a conversation about that settlement check. And 
he just throws everything at me. He'll get angry and talk about the the women and throw that in there out of nowhere. He'll be mad and be petty about me moving his stuff. Like one time I was cleaning up and I set his laptop on the ground and he walked in. Mm. Let's just keep in mind that he doesn't clean up after himself at all whatsoever. And he comes in and he's like, wow, you're putting my laptop on the ground. You know that's more money than you've ever spent in your whole entire life. So he always just reminds me of everything that he's done for me, throws it all in my face, and just basically makes it seem like I'm an awful person. Mr. Steele? Okay, let me chime in on that. I give, you, I give you the full story. Okay, so we chilling, both of us off that day, and she decides that she wants to clean up the room. And so she sets my MacBook Pro on the ground, knowing that we have a dog at the house. So I hear is a bunch of tapping and stuff, and it's my Yeezys and my uh, phone pods is being thrown from this side of the room to that side of the room. So Let's just be clear, it's about a good eight inches because he doesn't clean up after a himself. Good eight inches. So. <laughs> she measured with a ruler. She like, measured. I just want, I had to be petty. You're sitting there talking about your shoes when I toss them out of the way, when I'm literally cleaning up and you come in and kick your shoes off. What, what sense does that make? You're not helping me. You just I throw just off all of your I just feel like she don't clothes. have no respect for my values or, or valuable stuff or the stuff that I bought well, her. You have respect you, for you, you don't put, put your up. stuff away, how much respect are you showing for your valuables? I know. <laughs> Thank you. The She's room. supposed to respect him more than you do? He has the location app on my phone so that he knows everywhere I am at all times. And, like, my freedom has just been completely taken away to... Mr. Steele, is that accurate? No, that's not 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 the way she. Well, you can grab my phone right now. Tell you me how it is. Well, you say he's controlling. That he's that that he wants things the way he wants them. That he's bugging you about getting married. That he wants to be in charge of things. Explain that to me. He has the location app on my phone so that he knows everywhere I am at all times. And like my freedom has just been completely taken away to suppress his insecurities. Um, Mr. Steele, is that accurate? No, that's not, not, not the way she's saying it. Well, we you can grab my phone right, right now. You can see the location thing was for safety purposes. When she got into her accident, I didn't know where she was. I, and, and at home? How was you at home when you got we, into an accident? <laughs> when she got, got into an accident. after the accident, and I've just been at home the whole entire time because I couldn't go nowhere. My, my arm was... We just talked about her being on the dates with the other women. So apparently she was going places. And in most of the places I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. Me. I didn't know where she was during those times. Mm -hmm. So for safety purposes, I put the location. Now, now you know that's a crock of stuff. You know how you do that, right? <laughs> you know exactly where she is when she has an accident isn't going to do you any good because you don't know she's had an accident until she calls you. And when she calls you, you'll know where she is because she's on the phone with you. So that's just silly. So you were, you, you were tracking and trailing her because you were worried about the other women. That's, let's, let's not waste our time. Give me some other controlling things that he's doing. Um, he says that if I want to be with him, that I have to get married right away and that we're going to have kids. And he's just enjoying this white picket fence dream, and I'm only 21. I've been out of high school for, what, three years? Why are you trying to force me? And you're 24, not even 25 yet. Mr. Steele, your response to that? I don't feel like I've ever put pressure on her to get engaged to me or get married to me or anything like that. Do you have any problems with the manner in which she responds to your enthusiasm over a yeah. possible future with her? I have no problem with her saying that she's not ready right now, but her just if completely saying that she doesn't want to do it. it up? How, what does she say? Like, she just, I'm never getting married? Yeah, she, or? Just, she says, I don't plan on getting married or having children, and both of those are a deal-breaker for me. So then why are you still with me? The conversations don't go well, because when I tell her that those are a deal-breaker, she says, well, you know, it is a possibility that maybe we can have kids and maybe we can oh, get so, married. So she tells you what she wants, and <laughs> then when want, he, yeah. she realizes it might get, get you out the door, right. she backs up she, off She of backtracks. Are, are, are you misleading him a little bit, Miss Lawrence? I don't feel like I'm misleading him, but if I say at least eight to ten times within one conversation that I'm uncomfortable talking about this, we can't even be solid in our own relationship, so why are we talking about marriage? About needs? the next step. Ooh, she sounds so rational. <laughs> she just, just not, not that you sound bad, but she's, she's, she's just firing on all cylinders over there. <laughs> what? How much money do you really think you owe him? I would say only two thousand. Two thousand mm dollars. -hmm. 
Now, why do you say it's 5000 I, I say it's 5000 because that's the half that she promised to give back from her settlement. Do you have any breakdown of the cost that, that, that appeared on your credit card? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, could I see that? You have receipts in correlation to me? I do. Okay, cool. I got the receipts. I'll let you see it after, okay. a, after I'm done looking at it. 5400 on six months of rent. That doesn't even make sense because our rent is 900 a month, and if you were paying half a rent for three months, how is it $5,000? That's why I was saying that it's half of that, because that equals up to eleven. <laughs> you see right, how it's yeah, 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 I you get you, I right, get you. It's right. a domino effect on That's his story. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, well, let, let her see that, just so we can... So she has an accurate assessment of what you're asking for. Do you want me to comment on the 300 that she Please do. About? Okay, so the reason that I didn't... I didn't want that money was because I told her to finish her physical therapy and when she got a job... It's a piece of paper, no receipts. And when she got sense. a job to keep that money in her pocket until her settlement came. If that's the case, why are you sitting here badgering me about paying you? If you're telling when me to keep it in my when pocket. When the settlement comes. I the have settlement's no, not I've never here, so what are you I've never asked about? her for a piece of what she got while she was working the job. First of all, you have great taste in women. <laughs> she's beautiful, she's intelligent, her math skills are on, <laughs> on point, you know. Uh, she's responsible, she's mature. You got good taste in men. Thank he you. is loving, he, he adores you, and I like you both. Here's why you shouldn't get married now. If you are in a relationship with someone, it's not this is where we're going, this is where we're going. You get there together. Now, I'm gonna award him $2,000 because that's how much you stipulated to yeah. that, that you owe. And so I'm gonna do that, but you, you'd be a fool to try to collect it. <laughs> <laughs> you want this. And you know what? The best way to get a woman is not to, to demand and control. It's to entice and seduce. You, you want a woman who comes running home to you, <laughs> not one that is obligated to tell you where she is. It's like one who's like, baby, I'm on my way. Where are you? I can't wait to get to you. I love... Oh, my. You know what I'm saying? That's what you want to do. You don't want to control. You want to engage. You with me? I'm with you. She likes that. <laughs> $2,000 if you a bright man that you will not collect, awarded to Mr. Steele. <laughs> it is so ordered. So how do you feel about uh, how today went? Um, I think we'll be able to get past this. I really appreciate the judge for giving us some really good advice and hopefully he learned how to seduce and get engaged. a woman to right. really want to marry him. So. Do you think you will eventually be ready to marry this man? I definitely do. I grew up in a two-parent home, so that's definitely the ideal situation for me. So. Mm -hmm. Judge Lynn had a lot to say to you today. Mm -hmm. She liked you, but, you know, she dug into you a little bit. Uh, how do you feel about how things went down? I feel like it, it was fair. Um, that's probably something I needed to hear, and I'll implement that into our relationship moving forward. Best of luck. All right, thank you. you got Follow us on Instagram for additional content from this case and preview our next all-new episode. Judge today's case, everlasting love. These two have been together for decades, and apparently they have been fussing and fighting the whole time. Let's see if we can't figure out why. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Garfield Wissanot and Carolyn Julius. Nick, they have been together for 22 years. Wow. But they have come to an impasse, so they've come before me. Mr. Uh, Wissanat, you say uh, you want her to pay you almost $1,000 for repairs on a car, and we'll talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Mr. Wissanat, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here today? As you said, we've been here... We've been in a relationship for 25 years, oh, not 25? 22. Oh, 25? Oh, oh, but no, you get so, credit for everyone. 25 years. <laughs> so we've been together a long time. I love her immensely, and I want to be able to marry her, but something is keeping us 
from going that extra step. I can't figure out what it is. I think sometimes because she's mean and nasty, <laughs> then she's loving and sweet. And I can't figure it out. Which one is it? I gave her a ring five years ago. Mm -hmm. I got on my knees in a jewelry store and asked her to marry me. We not married yet. Why? Why? I don't know why. You don't know why? You want to get married? Yes. I love her. I love her. It, does, is there something keeping you... I mean, you've obviously popped the question. Why can't you go that next step? I understand the importance and the commitment that marriage is. Right. I've been married twice before. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get married again and go that same path. Mm -hmm. I've been with her a long time, so evidently there's something special about her. But I can't figure out why both of us can't make that decision to walk okay. down the aisle. Well thought out, Mr. Wissanot. Ms. Julius? <laughs> Is he accurate about what he, what, what he said to me, that you both are hesitant to actually marry one another, though you've been together for a quarter of a century? Yes. And why do you think you're hesitant to marry him? I'm not. I told him, let's go down to the courthouse and get let's married. Let's do it. But he want to have a big wedding for what? He didn't been married twice. Mm -hmm. Is that true, Mr. Wizard? You, it, you're not sure, but she is. You know why? I wanted to get married in front of witnesses with her. Mm -hmm. She's so feisty and so quick to anger sometimes. If I got some of her family out in the audience saying, I see what you're doing and it's serious, you ain't going to act up so fast. You're going to behave yourself. You're going to act like a wife. You're supposed to act. So you think that if she has a big wedding in front of other people, it will restrain and contain her so that nasty attitude doesn't, doesn't have pop to be out? big. But I think people should witness it, especially your family. My mom and dad died about four years ago, and I wanted to do this way before they died. My father mm -hmm. was 93 when he passed. Mm -hmm. which, is, so, which, which bodes well for you. Yes. So he wanted to see this, and my mom wanted to see it. But they're not here. Mm -hmm. So I want her mother to see it. Her mother to okay. say, look at my baby girl. Let me tell you what I did. I went down to the courthouse, married my man, took some pictures, sent them out, got him, had him for 30 years. <laughs> People signing off and seeing and flowers and all that stuff don't change a thing. Well, I mean, right. not a thing at all. My mama wasn't even there. She was, you know, somewhere. I asked me, she called me three months later, did you get married? I said, yeah! <laughs> Your Honor, my mother said, go to the courthouse. Right. That's him wanting a big wedding. I, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. need that. You say she has a feisty attitude. She's come in here all meek and calm. Now, I don't know if it's me, the lights, the, the audience, or the cameras. What is she like when she's not in front of all of this? Give me some stories. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I want to do that. I might not be able to sleep tonight. Well, well, um, well yeah, sleep with one eye open. Yeah, give, me, yeah. give me the worst one. She's just got, she's feisty. I, lately, on the plane, flying out here. God. I didn't pay any attention. I just watched her to try to contain her behavior. We are on an economy flight. The right. flight is tight. Mm -hmm. People are tight. She ain't never really been on a plane like that before. Mm -hmm. So she's sitting there, I'm by the window, she's here, and it's a lady sitting beside her. I think the lady might have been invading her space a little bit. Mm -hmm. She started me mugging the lady, and I was like, oh, God, please don't let her say nothing to this lady while right. I'm on this plane. Right. And it's, it scared me, because I thought she was going to go off. She didn't, but those are the kind of things I see when people invade her space, uh -huh. or somebody does something to upset her. He only she... seen one, one part of it, and that was this side of it. He didn't, he couldn't see around her, and she had bumped me. That's why mm -hmm. my, mm -hmm. I did that. Well, well, well he, he claims that you're feisty. I haven't heard feisty from him or for you. Do you, can, do you agree that, in fact, you do have a bit of a fiery temper? No. <gasps> okay, so it's on you now, m m Mr. Wissanot. <laughs> Give me a story where she didn't contain it, and that fiery <laughs> attitude came out. The second apartment, we moved in together. I don't know why we were arguing this particular day. But I went to work and I came home. She went to the bank and took all the money out the account. And she took it all out. And, she, and when I went to the bank to try to get some cash, I'm like, what's all my money? I just got paid. Why ain't got no money? Uh, she I tells gave him me, the money back. I didn't spend I didn't that say, dime. 
And I took the but money because every it. time he get mad about something, he'll say, get out. And they want me to get out with no money. So do you put, I took Do money. you put Miss Julius I up when you get angry? She ain't never went there with but a you place. Tell me to... Not You anywhere. invited her to leave, but she never took you up on the invitation. She ain't going nowhere, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> I might say, of course people say stuff when they get angry. Mm -hmm. But I know... Before the night's out, she gonna be crying. I'm gonna be patting her up, and she ain't going nowhere. But yeah, there have been occasion that I've told her, "Well, okay, you yeah. can leave." Miss Julius, give me an example of one time where he asked you to leave. It's always over something stupid, and then we get in the argument. He'll be like, "Well, you can just leave." Like this is my house, not yeah. your house. Get out. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what that does to a woman, Mister Mister Wizenot? It destabilizes them and makes them mildly crazy. If they, we're deep into security. We're deep into to the home front and the homestead. So when you throw that out there, she never knows when you're really serious. Mr. Wizard, not you look like such a gentleman. Oh. You telling me you, you, you threw the F bomb at and your woman over the phone? say that the two of you don't have sex anymore and it upset you. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. I don't know, I guess, because I gained weight. I don't know. You're not, you're not big. How much but weight I did you gain? I was smaller than this when we got together 25 years ago. Well, how, I mean, everybody's heavier 25 years later. Well, how much have you gained? He had, like, he's supposed to stay the same size. Now, Mr. Wizard, I'm not going to inquire as to frequency, because I never do that to a dude. Mm -hmm. I think it's too much pressure. But I'll ask you, do you still find your lady attractive? See, now, that's where she don't know her man. She don't pay attention to the things that I pay attention to, the little things that I love about her that she don't even know I know. When she gets out the shower, and I pay close attention to her, even when she comes to bed at night, those are the things that I see her do, the little ladyly things that mm -hmm. she does. That you that find sexy. Me, yes, yeah. I find sexy. But who feels like having sex when you grumpy and grouchy and fussing all the time? You know? And the other... he always mean, so why should I be in a good mood and you mean all the time? When you say he's mean, give me an example. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Yeah, I want Give me an example of, the, of his anger. A couple of weeks ago, when he was late picking me up from work, and because I was mad at him, because he was late like, picking me up, he gonna turn it on me. And he said <laughs> on the phone and slammed the phone down and... Mr. Wizard, not you look like such a gentleman. Oh. You telling me you, you, you threw the F-bomb at and your woman over the phone? I don't, as a rule, I don't... As a rule, you don't, not. Wait a minute, I don't <laughs> disrespect her, but what she doesn't understand is we live 40 minutes away from where we work. Right. On days when the traffic's heavy, there are going to be times when I'm going to be late. Right. But she is extremely impatient. And if that car is not sitting out there when she come out that gate, the slamming and banging doors and the booming, because you, you don't how do late nothing is, at home. How late? How late is he? Um, yeah, that day he was an hour late. Oh no, yes, she was. You, That's was more than traffic. Hour. He no, was wasn't. because he was an hour late because he swear he was. Do I don't know what he said, but he was an hour late. I would have had something I to say to my husband. An hour late. I'm yes. telling you, Judge. I don't remember. He an said hour he late. was at MBA. That's what it was. You said you was at MBA. What is MBA? Uh, motor vehicle. Oh, oh. But we know he wasn't at motor vehicle because it still wouldn't have took him a whole hour to come and get me. She don't. She don't drive that distance every day, so she really can complain about how long it took me this particular day, mm -hmm. but she don't drive back and forth to see yeah. the traffic mm -hmm. and... Okay, Mr. Wilson, now you, 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 let, let me ask you this. You say that she makes poor money choices and does bad things with money. Yeah. Explain that to me. Well, she just bought a car most recently. Oh. Well, they bought the car a year ago, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. we, still um, we bought the car, it ran up for a year, and it rode pretty good. But I don't understand why you bought it, because you drive in my car anyway, most of the time. But the car went down, so I spent almost $1,000 to try to get it running again. After I spent $1,000, it still didn't get running. We bought it home, and it still was a problem with it, until about a week and a half ago, 
I took it to another mechanic, and I ended up spending another two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars in it. Now it's running, but, but I think she should have used that money more wisely. I drive it, but I don't have to drive it. I have a car. Why don't you drive your car? First of all, he mad because I bought the car. That's, yeah, let's just put I it know. out there. Be truthful about it. He mad because I bought me a car with my money. Were you mad because she bought her car with her money? No, I'm mad because she's driving my car with the money <laughs> she bought her car with. That's what I'm mad about. That's even you. real. I got you. I got you. I hear what you're saying. You two sound like... I know it's an old reference, the honeymooners. You know, you just fussing and fighting and getting on each other's nerves and everything, but at the end of the day, ain't nobody going nowhere. You love each other, trying to get, you know, you get on each other's last nerves. Let's sew this sucker up and see if we can keep it together, okay? So if I can give you one thing, what would it be? Miss. Julius, if I could give you one thing, what would it be from him or to make this better? Because y'all, y'all, y'all are too late to be starting over. Not talking about your age, but you know what I mean. It's tough out there. You found each other, you've been together for 25 years. Let's sew this sucker up and see if we can keep it together, okay? So if I can give you one thing that he can change or that you can change, what would it be? him to stop telling me to get out every time he get mad about something. Yes. Mr. Wizard, did you hear what that. I said about that last time? How devastating that is to women? Mm. Even if you don't mean it? It, 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 it rattles our foundation. We all have, I still have bag lady dreams, you know, like you a bag lady out on the corner, ain't got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and clearly, bag lady is not anywhere near where I am right now, but it still scares me. You can't, you can't say that. Can I, can I give that as a gift from you to her? That you won't do that anymore? From my heart. You know what I mean? There's some things that you just won't do. You don't hit women. You yeah, don't say you're gonna throw them out. Let's put that as a rule. Mm -hmm. If I can give you one gift from her, what would it be? More love, more affection. Now, she's the one who wants the most sex. What am I missing? <laughs> <laughs> we got to find a way to get it together. We just got to find a way. I don't... Do you still find her sexy of and attractive? Of course I do. Oh, of course I do. Yeah. Why do you think she says to me that she's not getting enough loving? Well, I, it's not an excuse, but we both work. And our schedules are really... I work 10 hours a day. She works 10 hours a day. That's and, a lot. Yeah. So, and not saying, but I am 65. I, sometimes I'm just tired when I get in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, we have to find some personal time. That's what makes a difference with us. We haven't found a time where we can just take for us personal time just for you and me. Uh-huh. Ms. Uh, Ms. Julius, would you agree about that? Yes. That you just need some personal time together? Yes. And stop being that couple that it focuses on all the little annoying things that the other one does all day long. You have to, you, you have to deal with that and then focus, Pat, to the joy. You've known each other 25 years. You have memories. You have love. You've had experiences. You have all of those things that you've done for each other the, over the years. Don't get stuck on the late, unless it's an hour late. That's a little much. But you know what I mean, on the little things. You know what I'm saying? She, she got, she mean mugging a lady in the airport. You know, you on your side in the airport. Offer to switch seats. That middle seat is uncomfortable. Offer to switch seats. Be gallant. You know what I mean? Women love that. You know, reignite that fire that, you know, may have, you know, died down 20 years ago. Give that woman, you know, a little extra love and support. And pull off, peel off that attitude. Nobody wants to be with a crispy chick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, if everything is met with anger and derision, and you, you the same way. Don't be crispy. You're too old for that. Let it go. You know, be nice. The, you know, uh, uh, politeness and courtesy is a thing for a reason. 
You know what I mean? It greases the wheels of life. It makes it easier to get by if we say please and thank you and, yeah. and, and, and pull back off the I want and you didn't. But you know what I could get? It makes everything easy. I know in this day and age, we looking to y'all for the way to get it done right. You know what I'm saying? So tell me about this car she ruined. No. The I catalytic converter, which I don't know what that is. I know what a spark plug <laughs> is, and I know what a tune-up is. Yeah, well... That car? The Volvo, yeah. yeah it went Did down. she wreck it? No, 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 it's not wrecked. As a fact, when we leave here, I'm going to go do a little work. I'm going to clean up. It hasn't been driving it for a while. But now it's back to running. I done spent enough money in it, so it's running now. I just think I want her to be responsible. Help me pay for some of the stuff that goes wrong with your car. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why do I have to foot the whole bill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I make sure we got gas in the car. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. Ms. I Ms. Ms. Mr. Wizard, not Ms. Julius, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to, I am not getting by anybody. I'm going to ask you to, to go home and for one day don't pay attention to nothing regular. I want you to kiss her on the neck every time you see her. When you see her get in the bed or out of the shower and you delight in that, make sure you tell her. We want to hear about it every once in a while. Ooh, baby, look at that. You know what I mean? It's so fine. You know, she, she might be happy with a kiss and a hug and a pat on the butt behind her, then you don't have to deliver the entire meal. You know what I mean? Just give her a little love appetizer. She wants that closeness. She wants it to... And be a person that he wants to be close to. If you're crispy, it's no fun to cuddle crisp. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Love each other. Start all over again. You're a great couple. I want you to be the great couple all the way through the end. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so worth it. All right, we got a little work to do, so you think you can uh, give a little more love in here? I'm willing to work. Yeah? And yeah. cut back on the attitude, man? I sure will. Tell us about what happens next. They're gonna get married. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah, gonna if get she married. wanted to go to courthouse, we'll go to court. <laughs>
Yes. Um, so once uh, we did eventually have a successful, we uh, went to the doctor and the doctor said, yes, you know, I'm pregnant, you know, everything. So everything was good. I would say probably about four or five months of uh, being pregnant. Uh, we would fall out. He would say mean things. His mouth is bad. He would be like, oh, it's time for you to call the doctor. You need to make an appointment. And, you know, this ain't for us. We, ain't have, we can't have no kids together. But he would say mean things to me. So, um... But then he apologized, and then I'll forgive him, and you know we'll go on about our day. Um, he's Does he cheat on you a lot? A lot. But okay, I give me some examples of times one. when you've actually you got good evidence on it. Oh, so he left to go because he's a personal trainer, and he has he sell his own juice. So he out a lot making runs, selling juice. So he left his phone on the counter, and I decided to go through it because it was just ching ching chinging all night. So I go through it and. It's like, oh, I love you, I miss you. Uh, I wonder if you still think about me like I think about you. And so when I brought it to his attention, oh, you know, it, it's just nobody, nobody. Like, but evidently, you got to be responding back. For her to say something like that to you, you got to be responding back, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So then uh, he would go uh, one night for the UK game. We were supposed to go together to watch the game. Well, he says, well, I got to make a run. Then I'll come back and pick you up. Well, why you got to go make a run, then come back? Why can't I just ride with you? So evidently, he must have went to meet the other girl. When he came back, I was in pain, so I didn't even get to go nowhere. We, we sit at the house, chill, whatever. But um, eventually, it came out. Somebody came and told me, like, oh, you know, he's riding around with another chick in the truck. And at first, I didn't want to believe, like, because we, we was together a lot. Like, I went with him when he sold juice, you know. We trained, like, he was a person right, trained, yeah. and I... And I so you thought everything was cold? Cold. Like, and he told me he loved me. Like, you don't say you love somebody and you're out cheating. Like, mm -hmm. you just... And you're having a baby. Like, you want a whole family. and But you out here still being a dog. Like, mm -hmm. you almost Mr. 40 years old. Mr. Richard, respond to any or, or all of that. Uh, Yana, from the beginning, from up front, you know, LaShawn knew that I was a dog. You know, I, I told her from the beginning I didn't want to be with her. You know, she knew every most of my clients that. She knew from the beginning you didn't really want to be with her. Yes, ma'am. After she had the miscarriage, yes, uh, she says the two of you made a conscious effort to try and have another baby. Is that accurate? Yes, ma'am. Why would you do that if you didn't want to be with her? I wasn't ready at the time to settle down. You know, she knew this. Yeah, but what you what? what why try to have a baby though? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if talk about committing yourself to somebody else. Yeah. That's the ultimate commitment. Why Why did you ask her to have one? Wanting more kids, but I didn't want to be with her, you know? Wanting more kids, so you just like having children with various women? No, at the time, you know, I just wanted another child, and, and you know, I didn't... Seriously? How many kids you got? I got five and a grandbaby. And want more. And you have five children. Yes. How many different baby mothers? Uh, just four. Yeah. Just four? Just four. <laughs> Do you spend significant, meaningful time with all of those kids? Yes, I do. I, I love all my kids, you know? I didn't ask you if you loved them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I asked him, do you spend significant, meaningful amounts of time with all of your kids? Yes, ma'am, I do. Yes, ma you do? Yes, ma'am. Is that true? I want to know how you do that when you in Atlanta and she's in Kentucky. Yon, I, I travel all the time. You know, I'm a travel uh, trainer. You know, I sell my juice, work out with clients from Atlanta to Kentucky, traveling. And then when I do come in town, you know, if I don't pay my child support on time, I, she wants more money. I don't get child me, support. She won't let me see my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, she rather nag and argue all the time. That's why I moved out from, from the house with her. Right, you know? right. I'll put him You out. know that child support keeps going up yeah. the more children you have. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you get that part, yeah. right? Yes, mm -hmm. What did she misunderstand in the beginning? She, she, did she did she mistake your desire to actively try to have a child? Which, by the way, if you were my daughter, you and I'd still be on the floor fighting mm -hmm. about trying actively to have a have a baby with a guy you didn't know quite that long and who you weren't married to. I don't know what that's about. Mm -hmm. Did she mistake your desire for a child for a desire with a future with her? Or do you or did you 
or did she simply not decide not to pay attention to you when you told her what you were about? She, she wasn't paying attention. She already knew off my social media pages what I do. She, she knew I worked out with clients, and she knew I had I would have sex with most of my clients that work out with me. I was, I was a complete doctor. That's... Are you serious? No, do you know anything about games? Yeah, that's what I, I mean, I mean, dudes have games. Yeah. Not all dudes, but a lot of dudes have games. Thank they you. say whatever, whenever, yeah. however, to get you to do whatever. Did you know he was I, I, having I, I, sex honey, with most of his clients? Your Honor, I didn't even know nothing about him. Like Your Honor, he, she's a liar. He he told me he was like, um, you ain't, you never heard of me? I'm sniffle. You never, no, I don't, I'm not out there like that. So no, I don't know no sniffles. Oh, well, well, I'm a rapper. I'm a dude. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know all that. So let me tell you. Are you people people came famous in me? your own mind? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm from Lexington, Kentucky, the home of the <laughs> juice. You know, that's me, Flex the trainer. That's what I do. She knew, she knew, I, I, that's what I do. Work out 24 7 with my clients, sell my <laughs> juice. She was one of my big clients with my <laughs> juice. She was losing weight. She lost plenty of weight. And uh, she, she just, she was crazy about me. You know, she would oh. stalk me. I would be at the gym. I would be at the gym. She'd be sending me pictures like, oh, I see you. I'm like, oh, I'm working out my clients. She would come oh, in. Oh, my God. She'd come to the gym. Oh. I want more child support. Like, hold on, you need to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know she, she was, you know, a little cuckoo. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Cuckoo puff. Your Honor, let me tell you. I bought juice part three or four times. Well, first, twice. twice. Once, the second time, then we start working out. When I work, he's like, get a bathing suit. We're gonna work out in, in the pool. Okay, we go to the Y. So he was like, you know, you're not my client no more. When I first saw you, I knew I had to have you. That's, that's, that was one of my roles. That's what I do. That's, that's one what of my you life. do. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying, I, I didn't have, I was single. She, I was doing me. I was doing me. I wouldn't even, she like, do you me. know anything about games? Yeah, that's what I'm I saying. mean, I mean, dudes have games. Yeah. Not all dudes, but a lot of dudes have games. They say whatever, whenever, yeah. however, to get you to do whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and for some reason, Otherwise, intelligent women get, like, this deeply stupid yeah. and think, man, this cat that's got four, five kids with four other women, all of a sudden, just, they all went away, and the one, the thing he said to me was, the, you know, he told those other women, oh, I'm just with you waiting on the right woman, and you thought you were the right woman. How do you, how does that happen? I didn't think I was the right woman. I just, I... Didn't base on what his past was. She knew it, you know what I'm saying? Why wouldn't you though? Because I feel like you got to give the people a chance. People change. You know what I'm saying? If you go by what somebody else said, like what do you think <laughs> he told those women in his past to get them in his bed? He he didn't tell me. I didn't know he was sleeping with all his people that he was working she knew out with. That, Yana. He's lying. She knew. He's lying that. because you know he had kids, case. right? Yeah. Two. Oh. I knew he had two. What well, three? I take that back. He got. Two daughters and a son. They're older. They're like the 20, 19, 18, they in that age. So, yeah, I didn't think he was, like, with anybody. When he came to me, like, yeah, he's single she, type she, thing. Yeah. I'm single. I'm doing me. I had, I was in a relationship. I was mar relationship for 17 she years. Married for six. I had got a divorce. After, like, two years, I'm doing me. Oh, so you hadn't been out there in a minute. I, I, so I haven't. Like, I before I even that. start uh, fooling, fooling with him, I was already kicking in with somebody else just having fun. Like, he came to me. I of course want, they all do. I that's what y'all do. No, for him she, to say I was stalking him, she, that's a lie, because uh, I ain't well, got to say that didn't matter no anyway. I just want to say. Do you at all feel bad about the havoc that you cause in yes. women's lives yes. when you knock them up and walk off? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I, I, I feel I'm, I'm trying to be a better person nowadays. I'm not that same person I used to be, you know. When I got out of prison, I first just met LaShawn, and mm -hmm. uh, she started working out with me, and I was thirsty and uh, coming out of pr prison. And, uh, you know, I... Did you know he had just come out of prison? He told me he got out 2016. You know, changed my whole life around. And I'm not the same person I used to be now. More... And congratulations for that, Mr. Thanks. Mr. Richard. It's not, not easy. I'm... Oh, you don't have to applaud for him. He just did you dirty. I'm, I'm just I'm more, saying. I'm more professional nowadays. I moved to Atlanta to change my life around. I'm in, moving in the right direction. With my... Are you still sleeping with each other? Nah, uh-uh. I'm done. Like, there's... Done completely. I don't see him like that. No, I don't trust him. All I want him to do is be a full-time father to Kamari. That's she all I that. want. Don't ever let... I don't care what he says. Amen. I don't care how he changed. Because he thinks he's that dude. And I want you to let make sure he knows that he's not. 
She knew I was a dog, Yana. I'm not that same person no more. But she knew. Yeah, she knew. And now she wants to knew me, but it's, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know. Oh, she don't want you no more. Yeah. She, she done. Yeah. Don't you, you think? Uh, I can have if I want to, but I don't want to. Miss Miss Fondren, if you hear nothing else I say today, you need to hear this. Don't ever let that statement be true. Don't ever let, I don't care what he says, Amen. I don't care how he change, because he thinks he's that dude. And I want you to let, make sure he knows that he's not. I'm so sorry. Amen. I'm so sorry you're hurt, I am. Uh, you hadn't been out there in a while, so I take back some of my fuss. Do you see what you did over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I called You've a lot probably of done that repeatedly. Yeah, I have. I have heard a lot of women that's been in my you life. You know, you, you, you damage your community when you do things yes, like that. Yes, ma'am. You, you... They got to share your money. They got to share your pain. They got to share your time. Our kids don't have solid foundation because they got one-fifth of a father. Out there, you know what I mean? You are damaging the whole community when you do that. Yes, ma'am. You say he doesn't care for his child. Tell me why you believe that. I say that because he don't keep his word. When he say, um, like right now, I'm still waiting for him to get a dresser for our room. Oh, oh, I got it, I got it. He tell me all the time, all you gotta do is ask for it, and she got it. I, I ask, he say, closed mouth don't get fed. I ask, I still don't get it. Like, you, you, you pick and choose you said what that? you want to do. Yeah, she wants me to when jump you when it's, do She it. wants me to jump when it's on her time. You know, so I do a, I do a, I got, I got my own cleaning service back home, a carpet cleaning, and I, I do a lot of stuff, and she knows, and I be busy when I come in town sometimes, but, and I don't get too to get around to... Too busy to be there get, for his kid. He I told me, to get, I, I'm too I busy him, to go shop for I told a dresser. Him, I told but him but you can't truck. take out five minutes. But, but like he said, I, I travel all the time to see my kids. I give it a so money. when do you have time to see your kids if you so busy all the time when you come down here? So when do we see them? Does he see him regularly? Does he see your child regularly? FaceTime. FaceTime. I mean, since I had moved from state to state, you know, right. it's, it's hard to, for me to... Mm -hmm. And then when I do come in... Are town, you regular with the money? Yes, ma'am. Money's... Hey, there's no issue. It's just when, I, when she wants me to... <laughs> My pockets are empty, Yana. I ain't gonna put no money in her pocket. I go do it myself, Yana. Well, when you gonna do it? You know. When's the last time you've contributed financially to, to your child, to that child's life? Uh, I was all the time. You know, not not too long ago. When yeah. is the last time? Uh, like last week. Last week, what'd you do? Uh, she went out of town, and I bought my daughter like so much clothes and shoes, and you know, my daughter spoils. You know, she don't really need. need His it. mama, your honor, bought all the shoes. Mm -hmm. So he, I didn't, he I didn't got get... a, he got about three or four outfits. And can you count? Yeah. She yeah. can't count. She yeah. cannot count. Yeah. Yeah. They're, and and you know, you little... don't sound like a remorseful man, she, Mr. Mr. He, he's not. So tell me why you are seeking $1,575 from him. One, $175 for a personal training session. I can't wait to hear that story. And $1,400 <laughs> is for an unpaid loan. Please explain that to me. Well, that's the, the cost of the package that he started out with. So you're supposed to get, with $175, you get unlimited training and unlimited juice. Well, the first time I've trained, like, okay, it was a free workout, see how I liked it. Okay, cool. I see, I can do this. I can lose weight with the juice and everything. Second, three, maybe second, third time, it was, oh, now, like, we, like this now, so we ain't, you ain't my client no more, so the training stopped going lower and lower, and then I stopped getting the juice. Like, I didn't get $175. That was worth it, uh, worth it juice of juice and training. juice or training. Like, did, I got heartache and pain. Yeah, sure. did, <laughs> did you get light on the training in the juice which, when you two became an item? Yes, I did, Yana. Once, so you think you owe her for that, right? No, nah, once I got what I wanted, she knew it. She knew I didn't want to be with her. You know, what? You know, she, she, <laughs> Tell me about the loan. So, um, I, I didn't work long, so all I got was $3,700 from my taxes. He wanted to do a, a company truck. I believe, regardless of how he treat me, I believe in him. Mm -hmm. I know he can be a great person, a great trainer, you know, whatever he put his mind to, he could do it. So he came to me, he's like, I need to get a truck. You know, once I start getting my money, I'll pay you back. I said, okay, cool. You know, 
a month go by. Okay, where the truck at? Uh, I'm still looking. I'm still looking. I'm going to get one up here. Okay. A uh, couple weeks go by. Where your truck at? Oh, uh, well, and then he eventually, oh, I tricked, when we, he waited till we fell out, and then he was like, oh, I tricked that off. You ain't getting it. I tricked that off. You ain't getting it. Mr. Richards, did that occur? No, not, she's not, she's not. Will you tell the story correctly then? Uh, I was seen a couple, I got a, I got a cleaning service back home and uh, I wanted a van for the company and I knew she got her taxes and I knew I could get some money out of it, so I just asked for it, mm -hmm. you know. So she gave it to me and I told her what I was doing with it and she politely gave it to me. She didn't say give it back or nothing, you know, cause, you know, we like that, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So. She knew what the business was. Miss mm -hmm. Fondren, Mr. Richard is a con man. You got conned out of $1,575, and now I'm awarding it to you this... It is so good. What are your thoughts now after speaking with Judge Lynn today? I'm happy with everything that, you know, was said. Um, I, like I said, I just want him to do what he got to do for Kamari and, and just be that, like, I'm done. Is there any remorse, you know, thinking back and, and kind of... Decisions you made. Yeah, you know, I truly apologize. I told her plenty of times how I apologize, how it was, and what it is now. And if I could, I would take it back. You know. Judge, today's case is cookie lady. Infidelity early in a relationship can cast a shadow over the entire thing, no matter how long it is. Let's see if I can't shed some light on this situation. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Latiskia Turner and Deshaun Mitchell. The two of you have been together for 18 years. You have two children together, and you also have one child from a previous relationship, but you treat him like he's your own because you've been with her so long. You are here in divorce court seeking $2,300 from Mr. Mitchell for a car. So we're going to talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Ms. Turner, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this relationship and why we're here today? Judge, I've been with Sean for 18 years now. And at this point, if I'm unhappy and he continues to be unhappy, I just want to be done. Why is everybody so unhappy? In the beginning of our relationship, we lived in an apartment complex. There was a young lady that I seen through the building. Mm -hmm. So I got off work early one day, and she was knocking on the door. When I answered the door, she had a tray of cookies in her hand, saying she was bringing it for my son. And I'm looking at this lady. It was mysterious to me because you never speak to me, so why are you bringing cookies to my house? Mm -hmm. So a couple days after that, I roll over in the bed about 2 o'clock in the morning, no Sean. So I decide to go to the floor that I seen her punch on the elevator, and I see him scrolling out of her apartment very comfortable. Yeah. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Uh, do you recall that occasion, or? I don't recall at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... Uh -huh. <laughs> do you recall anything similar to that? Something like that. I was on that floor, but I didn't come from her apartment, like she was saying. It's, it's just a big coincidence. You know Yo, and I got off the elevator, I saw him come out of her apartment. But you say it wasn't you. No, nah, it, nah, it was me, but I wasn't It wasn't out that her. apartment. It was Where were you coming from? I was coming from a, a mutual friend of ours' apartment. We was playing games all night. You know, uh -huh. We were some gamers. But wasn't what? that 18 years ago? Oh, Ms. Turner. Not, not really 18 years, but... And you're still hounding this cat every day, every day about women because, let's give you the benefit of the doubt, 10 years ago, some chick came to the door with cookies. <laughs> and you've been on him ever since. He admitted to having enough with him. It wasn't cookies for me, Yana. It was for, I, it was for Well, you, you skipped that part. Did you have an affair with the cookie lady? <laughs> I, I, afterwards, you know, afterwards, since she, she put a lot to my attention, so... It kind of pushed me over to that way, so I was. Cookies were good, huh, Josh? Cookies were good. I'm being well, I guess good so. cookies. I guess cookies were good. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. 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 Uh, 
Mr. Mitchell, how long did the affair last? Um, soon as she said something about it, I just I just left it alone. But um, I found out she was having an affair with a coworker, so that's what really pushed me on to it. Were you having an affair with a coworker? That's a yes. He said <laughs> he said tomato. I say tomato because it was not a physical relationship. Mentally, yes. An emotional connection. Connection. But this is like forever ago. Right? No. Yeah. Give, me a, give me a time frame. Help a sister out. The incident in, in which he's referring to with the coworker, um, it's been within the last two years. Well, when's hey. the last time you caught him doing something wrong? Within the last two to three years. With, with Sean, it, it, it really never stopped with him. To her. She to said her. to her. Yeah. And... Have, you, have, you, have you messed up since the cookie lady? Nope. Only thing I've been doing is what, what I think is right, paying bills and being a good father. But, you know, I always, it's always going to come back to me as, you know, the cookie lady. Give me the best evidence post-cookie lady <laughs> <laughs> that this man's running around on you. Because I'm about, I'm, I'm about to call you on your delusion, but go ahead. I don't even know where to start. Best evidence. <laughs> Uh, Something that I'll say, yep. He was, was another, messing up. There was another, um, there was another neighbor. Um, this is a, during the time in which he was referring to me having an emotional affair, right? With, with a coworker. But excuse me. So hang on, I'm just okay. So I was also friends with her, but at the same time, I don't feel like my husband should be hanging out and feel comfortable walking in her house, fixing things and doing, doing this and that for her. Some of the stuff you don't even do for me, so why are you doing it for her? And then we were sit sitting on the porch one time. The neighbor got jealous because Sean was braiding my hair. He even noticed it and said something about it. So we argued about it many, many times. And then me and they were sitting on the porch for Mother's Day. And she admitted to me that Sean hit on her. Okay, Sean, now why don't you tell me your version of what's been going on? I ain't hit on her. I just, I just was listening to her conversations right. with them about us, and maybe they got a little jealous in their own right. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, is, is she nonstop? I get the sense that she's nonstop with accusing me with the cheating stuff. But on the other, other end, your sex life has been non-existent as well. None of this, that. You know what? Tell me about I, that. I'm gonna tell you about one time. You know, we both be working. It's a hectic schedule, so I can understand that. But one time, we both made plans on going out, and I told her, okay, when I get off work, because she was off that day, mm -hmm. I said, when I get off work, we're gonna go shopping, we're gonna go get some outfits and some sexy lingerie, we're gonna go out to eat and go it's to a, a movie. Do it up. Have a great time. We, right, when we come back home, we gonna have us some fun. Okay, everything got good and good and going until we get to the house. Next thing I know, she just zoned out and started getting on social media and looking at TV, and then, and then she just went down here from there. Okay. So I don't even. I don't. Ms. Turner, was he was he trying to get his get his groove on, and you and and you fell into your e life? If if he did, I probably didn't notice because he don't do it. He don't do it. I always say to me, a man like a microwave, boop, they ready. A woman like a crock pot. I need a little romance, a little brewing to get those juices flowing. Well, Yana, I had he, rose petals and everything down. He, he used sex as a band-aid for everything. When he said he wanted to have sex, when he happy he wanted to have sex. I don't, I don't get that. But he just told me a story about going out and buying clothes and sexy lingerie. Rose and you guys would make it romance and play. And, and when I, he did do that, the crock pot still didn't get hot. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why because I was working so much, and I'm gonna tell you, when you get on the Facebook, you being nosy, it can suck you in. And that's what happened at night. And I was tired on top of that, and I fell asleep. And, and that's I'm not a good look, Ms. Turner. I know. Facebook. Dude. Facebook. Dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he put, some, he put some effort into it. And if you want to encourage a man to be romantic, last thing you want to do is have him be romantic, and then you turn up, you know, on social media. He's supposed to be ludicrous about it. He's supposed to be the big bully with the bat at the door, like Will Smith in Bad Boys 2. He's a great father. He's just a terrible spouse.
So what is your main complaint other than the, the sex life is dry, which you kind of you know what? okay um, with? She, I feel like she really don't respect my opinion. For instance, um, I was sitting on the porch talking to a family member. We sitting there talking about um, God thing. As you know, as um, black men, we go through different situations every day. So I'm just telling him like, you got to be mindful of when you are going and leaving, and make sure you you do everything by the book because you never know what's going on. She was, I guess she was listening in the house. So she come on the porch. You ain't got to tell him like that. You got to make it so he can. I understand, I'm like, well, this is a man and man conversation, a black man and black man conversation, and it's kind of hard to even candy coat anything about the worries of the world today if you want somebody to really understand. understand what's happening, what, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm Did like, you come out all out of your neck about uh, a conversation he was having with his I son? Don't, I don't even remember what he talked about. I don't even know what man he was talking May to. Maybe because she just jumped down my throat so much, just like, um, like the time with our daughter, she was trying to tell me about um, some young boy care about my daughter. I'm like, can't no young man under 25 care about no female besides sex. And, and you told her that. I, I told her that. I say. And what did she say? She jumped down my throat because she had a different opinion. You can't say that, this, that, and other. I'm like, well, to me as a father, you can't come telling me about some young man caring about my daughter and I hadn't even met him. So. Okay. But, but to, to, to his offense, he's a great father. He's just a terrible spouse. She told me about the young man about a month before she told her father because because she, she knew he wasn't gonna act, gonna like it. Wasn't, wasn't gonna like I'm it. Got gonna it. Like and plus the and plus the two brothers not gonna like it. She, right. Mm -hmm. So she came to me and, and I was like, when you but you told me so you gotta tell your daddy. And she was like, will you be with me when I tell dad? I said yeah. And. So we, I'm trying to warm him up to the idea and then my daughter come in and explain the rest to him. He just fly off the handle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you can't do that with children because if you show them that you don't like a certain thing, it's gonna push them toward, then she's gonna be sneaking with him. You, did you do that right then and there? Yeah. Not a good plan. Let me tell you how it go. He's supposed to be ludicrous about it. He's supposed to be the big bully with the bat at the door, like Will Smith and Bad Boys 2. You guys don't have to come at her the same way. She comes to you first with the soft stuff. Yes, she's gonna have to tell your father, and your father's gonna get upset about it. He don't want that, that brother around her. He don't want it. He don't want to deal with it. And that's the truth. And that's what that is. You don't undercut him with that. You talk to him about it later. You know, you say, hey, you know, it's like, I know you mad. I get to, but we got to let her out a little bit at a time. You know, why don't we do this? I don't like him either, but let's do this. Let's do it softly. But you don't disagree with him in front of her about an issue about her. <laughs> That's not in her best interest. <laughs> and I'm loving that attitude. Thanks. I mean, I like, yeah. Woo! That's what they're for. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, defending his home. Yeah. I don't want no, 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 little boy looking at her. Oh, go ahead with your bad self, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> you walked it all the way to the edge and he fell off. So you got it, you can't come at him with all of this global, gigantic, if we don't get it together, it's gonna be lost and for naught. Do you think you have a communication problem? What do you think is the source of the problem? I think it's between me and him. I think it's the comprehension. I'll say, I'll say something like, I, if I say the sky blue, he gonna say it's baby blue. But we both talking about blue. the same. We both talking about the same thing. But somewhere, our communication it get lost in the sauce. Do you? Let me ask you this: Do you disagree out of habit? Sometimes is, you can is, get in the habit, habit of just being disagreeable. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. It is a habit because sometimes she can be like, "Baby, let me talk to you," and I'm already like, "Well, I don't agree with you because I already know I don't want to hear it." Sometimes, <laughs> you know, after after so many times, I don't want to hear, it, and then I'll be. Don't want to hear what? I just sometimes, even after a long day, I'm even though I'm at home most of the time at, in my studio or something doing some music, I I, I really don't be want to, you know, hear her tell me everything that I already know and jump down my throat with it. So I'm already at a defense with it. Do you approach him in a way that's gonna get you what you want, as opposed to simply expressing whatever piece of frustration you might be feeling at the moment? 
he take every response I give him and he take it to the screen. Like I told him um, when we had the argument about my daughter, if we don't get our communication together, we're not gonna make it. And he just, oh, you don't wanna be with me? Oh, oh, uh, we gonna break up? He just took it straight there. Well, that's where you took it. <laughs> you, you went there. You walked it all the way to the edge and he fell off. He said, if we don't get our communication together, we're not gonna make it. What is that other than a, we're not gonna make it? To me, it means that we need to work on our communication. Are we but that's not, not what you it? said. They hear exactly what you say. That's it. They don't hear no nuance, no tone, no, you know, no, no, none of that. You know, you, you take it to that, that's where he goes. I used to say, oh, I'd, okay, Eric. And he'd say, okay. And my sons used to say, you know, my dad, when she says it like that, it means she doesn't want to do it. Yeah, but that's not what she said. <laughs> yeah. And that's how they are. Yeah. So you, got, you can't come at them with all of this global, gigantic, if we don't get it together, it's gonna be lost and for naught. You can't go there. Hey, look, man, we need to learn how to talk. See what I'm saying? There's a difference. Now, if she comes at you correctly, what you gonna do? I'm always compromising. I'm always there. I'm always ready to put my first foot I, out there. Is that I'm, what I'm I asked you? Is that what I asked no, you? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. The first thing you're gonna He's do sweet. when she comes at you correctly is listen to what she said, unlike what you did with me. <laughs> you understand what yes, I'm I saying? Yes, you're in your head about what you do right and what you do correctly. You can't come correct when she comes correct. A woman right. needs to be heard. A man needs to be, everybody needs to be heard. If you don't want to have that same rotating conversation all day, every day, you have to stop, listen to what she says, and say, listen here, baby, this is what I hear you're saying to me. I'm just tired of the arguments. Just like he said, I love him and he's my best friend and I don't want him to be unhappy or me to be unhappy. Oh, Lord have mercy. Listen here, I'm gonna give you a book of mine. It's called Making Marriage Work. I got a whole chapter in there about how to have a conversation. You could just follow along. But it, it, there's nothing wrong at your house that isn't fixable. First of all, the cookie lady is over. If you keep beating on that drum, you're just gonna beat yourself to death with it. That thing is over with. You're, 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 you're being jealous every day on the off chance that one day he might did what what he did one day before. Let's not go out like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Love him, enjoy him, be comfortable with him until you see that he's, he's no longer trustworthy and he's actually done something. But enjoy him and enjoy your conversations and come at him differently. And then you respond differently when she comes at you differently. Yes, ma'am. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. The kiddies are watching. So you want what? $2,300? Mm -hmm. You're not leaving him. Are you? <laughs> no. Yana, can what? I say this? Yes. I don't know what she wants that money for anyway when the, um, the car's still in her name. So but I it got think, repossessed. Yeah, but she when she went and bought it back, she went up there and it's in her name. And how can you want money for something that's already yours? It's in your name. I been on gave her that tenfold. Yeah, no, I, 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 you know, I wasn't gonna give it to her anyway, don't worry about it, but I just want you to hear what I said. Don't be frustrated and, and distraught. Be, be like, I got a new tool. You know what I mean? You're frustrated about how it's gone. I want you to be excited about the new tools that you can use to change it going forward. You, you can redirect the ship. You really can. You hear me? I want you to feel good. You don't feel good. I'm not helping either. You have more power than you know. Yeah. You have the power to decide how this relationship will go. You have the power to dictate how you feel and what you say and what you do. And day by day, inch by inch, you can bring this thing back from the brink. I'm telling you. This matter is adjourned. Let's start with you. How do you feel uh, after speaking with Judge Lynn today? You know what? I think she solved a lot of our problems. I think she just hit it right there on the nail. I mean, 18 years, 
It's a long, long time. time. It's a long time. But might be a new chapter after, after leaving here today. What are you willing to do to kind of meet her halfway? If the sky's blue, we're just going to decide that it's blue, right? <laughs> yeah, it's blue. it's blue. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? It's many more years to come, 18 plus more years. All right, well, we like you guys are rooting for you, OK? Pleasure. Nice meeting you all. Yeah. All right, take care. Well, you take care, too. Follow us on Instagram for additional content from this case and preview our next all-new episode. Judge today's case, love don't cost a thing. She says he's cheap. He says she's too flirty. Now it's time for me to decide just what's going on. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Alexis Butler and Antoine Dolford. The two of you have been together for three years, but you do not want to be together anymore. You don't have any children together. And Ms. Butler, you are asking Mr. Dolford for $500 for a phone you said he destroyed. I will talk about that momentarily, but before I do, Ms. Butler, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why the two of you are here today? All right, Your Honor, so we're here today because my boyfriend thinks that he's gonna be with me, a model, by being on a discount 24-7. He wants to be with you on a discount? 24-7. 24-7, explain that to me. So exhibit A, we have my nail. Mm-hmm. Press-ons. Mm-hmm. Five dollar press-ons that broke. <laughs> I need to be, if I'm a model, I need to have my nails done, a mm -hmm. Medicare, a pedicure, everything needs to be taken care of, and he doesn't want to pay for anything. Well, why don't you pay for it? I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but if you're my boyfriend and you're gonna be with me, I feel like you need to be able to pay for it. Really? Really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a push and pull. It's a push and pull. It's what a push else, and pull. What else is discounted? Oh, everything. Let's start with before I even had these press-ons, we had the original nails, which he decided, oh, okay, let's take you out. I'm like, okay, cool, that's so sweet. Where you want to go? We can get your nails done. Oh, thank you, babe. So we get there, and you know, during a manicure, before you get your color, after you wash your nails, they tell you, here's your receipt, this is how much you have to pay. No, he doesn't want to pay that. It was only 45. He wanted a discount. He talked to the manager. Did he get a discount? I left. <laughs> you were too embarrassed. <laughs> That's embarrassing. It's, we, at that point, we could have just went half and half, but you sitting here talking to this man, and so I'm like this, trying to hide my Mr. face. Mr. Dolford, Listen. were you trying to get a discount on the nails after the service was provided? Listen, I'm not paying that much. And she gonna break it in three days anyway. Like, <laughs> come on. And then I gotta go back and pay for it again? Nah. I ain't gonna lie, brother. I'm right with you. <laughs> <laughs> right with you. Go yeah. ahead. Tell, tell me what other things are discounted. So that's why now I have the nails. But on top of that, we went to a fast food restaurant. And I could have paid for it, but he wants to be a gentleman and pay for it. Which, is which nice. I have no problem. I have no problem with that but he decides to pull out a coupon again. <laughs> and so while he's looking for the coupon, you know, it's not one of those paper coupons, it's in his phone. So we're sitting there waiting for it to load up. There's people behind us. I don't like to be rude, so I'm just like, it's fine. He's like, no, we're, gonna, we're just gonna wait right here. It's fine, it's fine. I don't want it anymore. It's been like 20 minutes. I, it, was, it was a dollar menu. I don't want anything anymore. It's fine. <laughs> Could you not afford the full dollar, Mr. Dolford? Listen, Were you looking for a, a 25 cents off? Listen, let me tell you. I'm gonna get any, if I can get 20%, 10%, 5%. I'm if you can get, get a deal, you're gonna I'm get gonna a get deal. It. You hear me? <laughs> oh, I ain't mad at you. Hey. I ain't mad at you at all. Go ahead, you're not doing so well so far. I see. <laughs> Look at y'all, y'all, y'all choosing. No, I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm not trying to come off that way, but every single thing that we do is a discount. Everything that we need is a coupon. Like, even Valentine's Day, he tried to redeem himself for Valentine's Day. Wait, what did he do? He didn't redeem himself for Valentine's Day, that's what he did. He told me, oh, we're gonna take you out, you know, because you keep complaining that I don't do anything for you. So I just said, okay, fine. He gives me $40 in an envelope. 
And so before I even look at the envelope, he texts me. It's this long, cute paragraph. Well, we're going to mm -hmm. go out. I want you to take the money that I left for you in the envelope before I seen it. You know, I'm just like, oh my goodness, you're finally done being cheap. So I'm thinking when I go in the envelope, <laughs> I'm going to be able to get, at least not my hair, because I know my hair is expensive, so I understand that. But at least the outfit is right. $40. What, what am I going to get? My nails were $45. I can't. I saw. So I he just, left you forty dollars to get your some get yourself something for, special. Yeah, to go out. To go out. We're not going out anymore. First we didn't all, go out anymore. First, I kept Ms. it. Mr. Dolford, what, what was going on on Valentine's Day? I feel like this, this whole thing about being cheap. I got goals. Like I believe in you spend a lot of money on vacation, the household, like all that trying to spend money a hundred dollars a day. Nah, I got goals. I got right. things to achieve. What are your goals? My goals is to own a house, own. Two cars. We we already ride nice, but the maintenance on the cars, that right. all that stuff. Oh, right it's there. a killer. Exactly. That is a killer. You gotta take care of that first before getting your nails yeah. done. I oughta let you know. Can y'all know with this? What vacation? He might be cheap, but I wouldn't know because I'm cheap too. So I mean, you know, I have to let let you know about my impartiality and bias on this. You could be right. And we both could be wrong. Of course. We just on the same page. That's all I want to say. Let's talk about sexual exploration. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Your Honor, <laughs> she a freak, OK? She's a freak. When I tell you, we was, on a, we was on a flight to Vegas. Right. And I'm trying to listen to my music. I'm chilling, relaxing. We got a long flight. She over there nudging me, nudging me. And I'm like, what? What do you want? She wanted to go in the bathroom. <laughs> Join the Mile High Club. Of course, people are gonna see both of us going there. Yeah, right, right. But it's too small. I like. The... What am I doing there? <laughs> like, what exactly am I doing there? I like this. The... Butler, what's he gonna do in there? Start the engine. You know, you ain't gotta do nothing. Get me there before we get there. You feel me? I got and ain't... that ain't the first time. We're young. That ain't We're the young. first time. It was another time we was in the mall shopping. Right. She trying on clothes. And she looking at me, it's this look that she gave me, Your Honor, like. <laughs> and I'm like. And very well done. I understood that completely. Exactly. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Here, right now? She's like, I was like, no, you, you a screamer, okay? You gonna make noise, we ain't gonna disturb the peace. But I also do like bottle services as well as bartending. I'm a sociable person. Like when you're a bottle girl, like when you bartend, what is that? I when you like get the bottles and you just you know look cute and you hold them up with the sparklers, <laughs> yeah, he knows. Oh, yeah. He knows. Yeah, yeah. You were trying Even... to get busy in the mall. In the mall. We're, we're in our twenties. We're in our twenties. I'm not gonna ask you the question, but you know when people are younger. I appreciate not, oh, that, by the way. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> well, I didn't wanna, you know, I thought that's disrespectful to ask you that, but you know, when people are younger, we just have fun. Like, I don't know, the audience, y'all act like y'all didn't go out here and do stuff. <laughs> don't judge me. Don't judge me up in this show. I'm being real. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't it. It's another time we was in the movie theaters, but she set this date up, and she thought she was slick. Mm -hmm. She set this day up in the daytime, thinking nobody's gonna be in the movie theater. It was two old ladies in front of us, okay? <laughs> two old ladies in front of us. I said, I will give them a heart attack if they look back. <laughs> like, they see this body, I'm trying to tell you they're going to fade in that joint. <laughs> Miss Butler, were you trying to get busy in the movies? OK, look. <laughs> Because we could have went to the late night one, which would have been you no know, older people up in there, but I'm trying to make sure his cheap self can't pay for a matinee. You know, I'm trying to be. She got me on that one. In the daytime, on a Tuesday. <laughs> she definitely got me on that one. Since you want to be cheap, I had to make sure. I'm like, that's fine. It's five dollars instead of paying thirty. So exactly, big difference. Don't be I on my side five. now. Stay over there. I pay that you're fine. Five. You're fine where you're at. <laughs> Miss Butler, you say you uh, you accuse him of cheating. Yes. No, he accuses you of cheating. And I'm accusing him, too, because... OK, well, you start wherever you want to start. Well, here's my thing. Here's my thing. If you're pointing fingers at me and you have no proof, you're doing something. I model. So he has insecurity problems about oh, no. who I'm around. Who I'm around and who I'm going to be around. I'm Give me a story about that. So when I model, I might be around like different rappers. I might be around like also females as well. I'm not just around guys, but I also do like bottle services as well as bartending. 
I'm a sociable person. Like, if I come inside, I'm like, hi, how are you? How are you doing? What's bottle services? You said which bottle services? What's bottle services? Oh, when you're a bottle good, girl. Good. When you're a bottle girl, like when you bar What is I'll, that? When you, like, get the bottles and you just, you know, look cute and you hold them up with the sparklers. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Oh, yeah. He knows. <laughs> Listen. Well, oh. I've learned something new. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Do you have a problem with her being a bottle service, <laughs> sir? Not really. It's just how she carry herself when she in there. Like, you ain't got to be looking like no thought, man. Like, you got to keep it professional. You get what I'm saying? If you're going to do that, then do that. Don't be twerking. You ain't got to twerk, do you? Do you twerk? That's part of my job. First of all, that's part of my job. <laughs> twerk on people. If you guys mm -hmm. would look at my social media, I have never oh, that, twerked now, on any men. That's a lie. Ever. Where is it, Lia? Pull lie. it up. Show me. That's a lie. Where's it at? First of all, let's, let's talk it? about these, these receipts that I got. Okay, okay let's talk about your receipts. Those, those text messages that I seen, when, I, when we, we was, it was on my birthday. Uh-huh. Let's make it worse. She, I told her, let's get this Uber. She's drunk. Let's get this Uber. So I'm using her phone and a text message come across the screen saying, I want to see you. It was unknown number. But I looked through the text message, it's the same guy that she told me she blocked. But she didn't block him, because obviously he's texting Still texting her. Exactly. Then I see that they smoked together. I seen that. I'm like, so she been sneaky behind my back? Like, where's the trust? So now I'm like, oh, what's going on here? So I'm mad. It's on my birthday, Honor. We had a good night until up until then. And then I see, I walk in on the club with her, see her in a guy's face. She talking about this, uh, that's her job. Nah, it's the difference between Professional and personal. Put that ring on that thing, right? Where's it at? Is a ring coming? That's when me coming cheap, being cheap at. I was saving for a ring, but I ain't gonna tell her. Don't all you still was cheating. What y'all owing for? Have you stepped out on her at all? Did you cross the line with this gentleman? Ms. No, Butler. and that's his personal issue. Like, no. this is my job. My job is to socialize with people with modeling. Like, I'm going to take lingerie photos. I have to be a video vixen. I have to be a bottle girl, bartender. I don't have to. This is the job but I chose. But this is what you do, yeah. Yeah, this is the job I chose, and I like it. And I'm not being a hoe. If I'm out here being a hoe, I can understand. How about you talk about when you went missing? How about that? Tell me about when he went Say missing. Say she want to initiate all of this. Let's talk about he went missing. Tell and me. I had to go to my best friend's baby shower. Uh-huh. And he said, oh, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go get another gift. OK, cool. He didn't come back. <laughs> Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Said How you long was he gone? My phone. The whole entire time. It started at 4. What, it was over at 9. And when did you see him again? I saw him when I went home. Mr. Dolford, where'd you go? Listen, where did you go? All that. That was some girly stuff, like. <laughs> Don't I ain't going to lie, Your Honor. I, got, I, I went with the fellas, got some drinks, ended up at the bar. Like, it was too much every time I come around. Was it a co-ed uh, baby shower? It was most majority girls, babies, and... Right, yeah. I, I couldn't get my husband through the door at a baby shower. <laughs> but don't say you're going to come and then you bail out. Yeah. If we're in a relationship, we're supposed to be in it together. If we're going to go together, we're going to leave together. Because now you got me looking stupid, and then now you're well, mad. But she, well, she always take me to these places where it's... it's they talking about girly stuff. <laughs> What part of couple do you not understand? This ain't... Even when we around her family, when we get around her family, they talk about babies and ha us having babies. And she even got this, this little app on her phone that shows you what your baby would look like. Or should she take a picture of me? <laughs> yeah, and picture her. Hey, hey. Honor, like, she putting pressure on me. Like, I ain't ready for no kids right now. Like... Then when? Like, first of all, Your Honor, I believe in you get married first. I, I'm fine with that. Like, she... I'm fine with that. <laughs> Should I give you a hug? <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Put that ring on that finger, right? Where is it at? Is a ring coming? That's when me coming cheap, being cheap. At. I was saving for a ring, but I didn't want to tell her. Don't all oh, he still was cheating. What y'all all in for? Y'all ain't got no proof, though. Have you stepped out on her at all? No. Not at all. Not one time. Not, not one time. Not even when not one time. Not one time. Why the hell do you have all these female numbers in your phone? If it ain't your mother, your best friend, your cousins, who is it? Do you have a lot of women in your phone? Mm. Oh, I just didn't delete them, y'all. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I ain't delete no numbers. Mr. Dolphin. I ain't delete no numbers yet. I ain't gonna lie. You didn't, you didn't delete. You, you're not doing anything wrong. 
Nothing. I get it. Don't worry about it. I understand exactly what you're talking about. Do you? I do. I don't no know if this problem. is sarcasm or if you're like real right no, now. No, I'm for real. Oh, okay, I did cool. it completely. No, seriously. Okay, so your honor, we about to get real. Y'all ready? So I went through a depression a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, borderline anorexic, went down to like 80 pounds. Whoa. So when that went out, I end up going viral. So everybody's seen my pictures and you know, so a lot of people, not to say it like that, know who I am because I opened up about my depression and it really helped my modeling to flourish. So me already being like a happy-go-lucky, like giddy person, when I go out, yes, my job is even when I'm on vacation, if somebody's booking me to do something, I would tell him where I'm about to be at, who I'm about to be with. Not if that you night. wanna FaceTime, you said what now? Not that night. If you wanted to FaceTime me, you could have FaceTimed me. My job is to socialize with people. I have celebrities in my DMs right now and I don't respond back to it. It's no purpose. It's because it, you don't... I don't need it. If I'm in a relationship, I'm in a relationship, but he can't handle my modeling. So at that point, you don't need to be with me if that's what you keep thinking. He just literally just keeps getting pissed off at everything I do. My job is going to piss you off. What's going to happen when my levels keep going higher? I can take you with me, but not if you're going to keep having this attitude. I got you. I got you. You want $500 for the cost of a new phone because he said you just... You say he destroyed your old one. Tell me about that. Because his jealous behind <laughs> ended up breaking my phone, my friend. Well, he didn't break it, break it, but... The screen is cracked. Screen is cracked. Yeah, the screen is cracked because he's sitting there pissed off about what he thinks instead of asking me. So I'm not gonna lie because I know he's gonna air me out. I broke his too. In retaliation. In retaliation. Intentionally, like. Did you young. crack her screen? Yes, I did. I, what did it you was, do? I, it was. I, I was looking through her phone and she surprised me. She walked in. I was like, and it fell on my hand because my hands were slippery. Mm -hmm. Whatever. You feel do like you have the phone? Happens. That's a lie. Yeah. Do you have the phone? Yes, well, let I me did. see him. I this what she bring did. Him over. This what she did to mine. Don't she talk about yours first. Don't she talk about yours. You broke mine first. It was oh. an accident though. She did that. She tossed that across the room like, yeah, like she was it's a quarterback or something. You accidentally fumbled mine, so I'm gonna fumble yours too. You got me messed up. <laughs> I gotcha. You got some cracked screens here. All righty. I see what's going on here. Let me tell you people something. You are good looking, intelligent. Ain't got no outside kids. You working, you're smart, you're funny, and you done found a perfect one for each other. Don't mess it up with no little stuff. <laughs> you are delightful. Delightful. I enjoy you both. Don't be jealous of her. She's doing her gig. She loves you. She ain't doing nothing wrong, and she's going out of her way to make sure that you don't... She doesn't do anything that you can misconstrue. Don't... Don't bug him because he's cheap. You're gonna love it one day. You end up... You're gonna turn around. You're gonna be at a house. Your bills are gonna be paid. You're not struggling to go from Peter... Pay, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. It's good to be... You know what? A little cheap. He'll loosen up as the years go by as he gets to collecting 20s, a little you be money. Cheap when you get older. Hey, listen, I've been cheap since <laughs> I was 12. A broken nail, though. Oh, oh honey. A, a broken nail. I got nails. not nailed the first, and her sister's doing just fine. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordinary. We like you guys. We want this to work. All right, Jesslyn had a lot to say. What's your reaction and how do you feel about how things are gonna uh, move forward? Um, well, I appreciate her for hearing us out, even though I feel like he still needs to owe me for a phone, but on my end, I feel like we're done. I oh, don't say that. What do you think, man? If she can accept me in these coupons, yeah, we good to go. We can get married. <laughs> he, hey, he's saving for a ring, he said. He's still a cheater, but we'll talk about that another time.